Welcome back to the talk tonight. It's only January, but for some, the campaigning season is already starting. Syracuse Mayor Stephanie Miner stood in front of cheering supporters today, announcing her candidacy for a second term. It happened this morning at the Inner Harbor. The mayor touted her record, pointing to what she calls unprecedented downtown development, the renovation of city schools, the Creek Walk, Connective Corridor, and the new Centro Transit Hub. Pleased for her to join us tonight for our talk segment. Mayor, thanks for being here. My pleasure. Feels like I was just here. Yeah, <laughs> which, oh, I which was. you actually were. Yeah. I, I've got to say this, you know, we you know we're all in Syracuse when when the mayor is inaugurated on a day when how cold was it that, that day? It yeah. was I mean, like almost zero. Yeah, below zero <laughs> with Your the wind chill. Still cold. Yeah. And, and then you're exactly. announcing re-election, you're actually doing it out in, in, in only 34 degree weather. Exactly. So that's hardy stuff. Well, you know, I always say we're a hardy people and I like to embrace the weather. I don't like to run away from it. I think it's what makes us hardy, what makes us tough and resilient. Um, and to lead into what I said today at the Inner Harbor, that's what's going to deliver us and make us an even brighter city is our resilience and our belief in each other. So it doesn't matter if there's 20 inches of snow or <laughs> rain or sleet, we Syracusans will get through it and get the job done. How do you think you're different now than you were when you announced for your first run? Do you think you've, you've changed uh, personally, politically, and maybe in other ways? We know we loved her hair today, right? <laughs> right. I, 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 I get that out I've of the become, way. And, and in all seriousness, I've become much more conscious of of how I look than I ever was before, which mm -hmm. is both good and bad. Mm -hmm. um, but I look, it's a tremendous job. I learn so much every day and I look forward to that. That's you know part of what makes it so interesting. I'm a lot more experienced obviously than I was four years ago and I have a real sense of the commitment that you need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I thought I did four years ago, but Tom Young told me you can never know until you're actually mm. in the job. And when the phone rings at three o'clock in the morning and you pick that phone up and you think, what's gonna be on the other line? Or when you go into schools and you visit with kindergartens and they you know, vibrate with excitement because they don't know who Stephanie Miner is, but they know you're the mayor and they're excited about that. Or you get to you know, visit renovated schools and see projects or talk about an inner harbor that for so long had just been nothing and had, you know, we'd had failed uh, attempts at revitalizing mm -hmm. it. Now we're moving forward on that to be able to say, you know, I did that. I helped, I was a part of that. I helped move that forward. And so that's part of why we started the campaign in January, because we've got uh, a lot of very good things to talk about and I'm looking forward to talking about them and I'm looking forward to talking about them in an environment of saying this is why I think we deserve your support and this is why I'm asking for your support moving forward. We spoke with Tom Davey today who's the Republican Party Chair in Onondaga County. And I've, I've heard of him. <laughs> and he said that what, what he sees as one of your downfalls is that you have a hard time working with people. He noted the absence of some common counselors today. So how do you respond to critics like that? Do you take it personally? Is it tough to hear? No. Look, criticism is part of it and it's a natural part. It should be part of the job. That's how I think we all get better. But you know, I, I just have to say it's clearly just partisan he's got Tom's got to say something I think that if you ask Tom well geez you know the mayor and the county executive seem to have the best relationship of any mayor and county executive mm -hmm. in the state or in the history of the county I have a great relationship with John DeFrancisco uh, I have a great relationship with lots of people and you know uh, Van Robinson was there today people could people were invited whether their schedules met it at noon is a tough time but uh, um, I have good relationships and then I have other relationships that are rocky at times. That's part of being a leader because we have to make very difficult decisions and we have to move forward. We're, and we're doing a story today about uh, the firehouse that may close number seven because of tough budget times. Describe for us where you think you stand with this upcoming budget and how serious the problems are in terms of deficits. You, you know, I think that particular story has really got way out ahead of itself and I know it sort of started because of people putting things on Facebook and speculating. We have a 30 million dollar deficit um, and it should be no surprise to anyone that we're going to have to figure out and make very tough decisions on how to cut. The first wave of budgets of all city departments is due on Friday um, and so we've given some very tough numbers for people to meet. We have uh, currently about 40 to 48 vacancies in the fire department. We have about 40 vacancies in the police department. We are the lowest employment we have been in modern history. And we have not laid anybody off. We've done it through attrition and through management and cutting back over time. But you know, you get to a point where all of those things that you can do unilaterally, you have done. And now you start to say, okay, we need help from the state. We need help from the federal government. We need mandate relief. And if we don't get those things, then we're going to have to make cutback decisions that hurt. Because I have said to people, Look, this is a very difficult fiscal situation that we're in, but I will tell you the truth and we will move forward together 
even when the truth is hard to hear. And you're not likely to get uh, all the relief you need from those sources you're talking no. about. Maybe something, but not all of it, yes. correct? Co I, look, I would like to get all of the relief I need, but what we need is structural change, and Albany has been very slow in making structural changes. And so part of my responsibility is to make the arguments necessary, and at the same time to say, look at all the things that we've done on our own. We have service agreements with nonprofits. That is ne that's not happening anyplace else. We have a visionary sales tax agreement agreement that looks at government in a whole new way before and looks at, as, at us as a region. We're moving forward with economic development as a region. We deserve your support because we've done so much and, and we have grown so much and it's all good news that's coming out of central New York. All right, well, we don't know, yet know who the Republican uh, opponent will be, but we look forward to some lively debates. I do too. Plus, you're here on Monday, you're here on Wednesday, maybe Friday. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, see, we'll see again. My, it would be my pleasure. <laughs> Perhaps right. dinner maybe on <laughs> right. Friday. Thank nice you, Mary. Thank appreciate you. that. In just a few minutes, our talk continues away from the heavy stuff about taxes and politics to what's going on with the football team. Doug Marone stealing all the coaches. How can this be stopped? Brent Axe will solve all those problems in just a moment.